All right, man. This is a sick one. This is an important one. Yeah. This is episode 10. Yeah, right, guys. It's a little bit denser this time. We're yeah. trying to fit in as much as we can here uh, to get these episodes out to you guys on schedule. Uh -huh. and, uh, we've got a, so much exciting stuff to talk about, though. New things are starting in the Right Guys community and things are continuing. Uh, the projects that we've been carrying forward, we're just going to be we're so excited to introduce you to new things that we're going to be carrying into future episodes to show you guys what has been written from last episode and to talk about all those challenges that we're going to be continuing into next challenge. Um, there's just a lot of cool stuff going on right now uh, with yeah. the community and, and what we're doing practically with writing. And so, um, yeah, we're super excited to to jump into that practice with everyone. Yes. And we are, we are theming this whole episode is, is focused around developing stories and develop developmental techniques of hopping in and 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 how we can see uh stories grow from a little seed into something huge like if all you have is a, is like one idea one tiny concept that's enough like you can work with that and we're gonna we're gonna show ways to work with that we're also gonna uh talk about a, a cool uh technique that ben and i are kind of we kind of stumbled into but now we're trying to kind of mastermind that may very well already be a technique that we just don't know about <laughs> so we, we we're open to being corrected on that but either way uh, like you said starting something uh very fun that's actually going to last over a few episodes uh yeah. so yeah welcome to episode 10 let's dive in Look at us, episode 10. Hey, episode 10. Episode 10, here we are. And uh, do not be fooled, as though it looks like Ben's in the bar with me. This He is an apparition. He's invisibility. got his invisibility cloak phasing in and out. <laughs> yes, I'm between realms and realities right now. Ben, where, where are you recording from today? Right now I'm recording from um, my wife's parents' house in chester springs pennsylvania it's a beautiful day in the kitchen the right i am in the kitchen yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah found a good setup where we can kind of simulate the angle yeah I yeah could at least be talking to micah and we don't have a green screen here we just have this white background that you can see if i move my hand really fast uh, <laughs> and uh so yeah it doesn't doesn't necessarily key out quite as well but we've got uh it, at least we're beaming me in like a yeah. hologram. Yeah, originally we were gonna um, dismount the TV and set it up uh, on the side so we could just beam him in and, and we, could, we could still just look at each other like we like to do. But we called around and uh, we couldn't get any electricians out at this time to unhook our, our giant right guys TV and, and reset it up for us. So yep. we just decided to go did. with our standard hologram technology. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Oh man. Um yeah, episode 10 though. We made it. Like this is yes, a milestone. Sir. Yeah. I remember I remember when we were uh when we were uh had our our mastermind session on this thing uh before it all began. It was like I remember us specifically saying, "Dude, just think about it. One day you'll be able, we'll, we'll look and there'll, there'll be 10 episodes on here." Like, what? We haven't even shot the yeah. first one. This is going to be crazy. What'll what'll it look like then? It's it's a milestone for sure. Yeah. I don't know what the next milestone is. Something for some reason I want to say it's like 60. I don't that know. That is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read I I heard somewhere and I'm totally butchering so it's pretty pointless to say this but I heard that like there's like a there's like a a big cap to like a, a podcast that take off and if you can get past like the x mark or maybe it's like 25 episode mark or something like that then you've pretty much your your chances of of lasting are just better i don't know that'd be a good uh, benchmark to know yeah we've got, uh we've got 10 in the bank and i watch a lot of h3 podcast 
uh, it's like a podcasting network on YouTube. They have a, a few podcasts that they run mostly held by Ethan Klein. And, and he, he always says that episode 10 is the, um, the big uh, maker breaking point for podcasts. So, you know, I think we're going to see, we're going to, we're going to see whether right guys uh, has what it takes to to go the distance. Yeah. You know, we got a community behind us though. I don't know if all the other podcasts have that, but I mean, I think that, I think all the signs have been, have been going strong. I think that we have what it takes to make this a show that, that stays on the road. So, I mean, I think so too. Def- definitely uh <laughs> stick around to see it's going to be a spectacular one way or another a train wreck <laughs> or a glorious ascent <laughs> yeah. to the clouds either way stick around it's worth watching <laughs> uh well what's been on your mind um i mean a few things like getting farther in elden ring the fact that there are item descriptions in elden ring which i was just again going <laughs> wait <laughs> am i missing them press yeah i think so i mean like they are shorter but like Like, there's like some of them are longer like like some of them are normal length like a lot of like key items and things have descriptions and then (laughs) the the, some basic things are more basic (laughs) okay 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 All um, all right and one of the things that I mean, it's not necessarily just from this week. It's just something that's on my mind a lot that I've wanted to talk about and kind of bring in. And this is, I guess, the segment that makes sense to do that in um, since it's just kind of bringing in random things. Um, Like lyrics and songwritings are things that we talk about a lot. Uh, And there's one band, one particular group that is like, has been doing lyrics in like a really particular way. And like talk, talking about them and and uh, and the band is called Darling Side. Hmm. Um, and basically their goal with lyrics is to um, paint a, a like paint a picture with words and pretty much ignore like grammar and logic. And just take the they take like their melodies at pretty much and it and it seems to me like what they do is they go over that melody in in their head until they find what syllables sound best over what like <laughs> parts mm. of like and and it's not gibberish, like they put together beautiful lyrics and prose, but it's all based around the concept of like only singing the words that fit the best and are like the most perfect to sing over hmm. the lines. And so like and then crafting the, a story from that type thing. Yeah, or? kind of. And and a lot of them aren't necessarily like a story. It's like impressions and like um emotions and it's feelings just a, and stuff. Yeah, like the uh they have one song that opens through the oak and poison ivy as the lemon light was alkalining. And that so it sound like, very nice. Yeah, and you kind of get like an image of like what it would look like or like be but it's not like it's not a story and it's not like specific yeah um yeah like uh they they have this one song called time will be and i wanted to read some lyrics from that uh we need to set up a little timer for these Mm -hmm. pauses Um, all right. Yeah. Just this, the, this verse, uh, in my loose head, my state July, my mind, a room of Ruby light. I find you there in the empty road that flickers by the almond grove. Uh, it's like, um, just like nothing's that kind of like are all each individual like little nuggets that that are like so visually poignant Mm -hmm. and it's just like uh it's kind of like a show don't tell yeah you know like what does 
I'm going to paint you a picture of what I'm seeing and how does that make you feel? Like if, mm-hmm. if I give you that, like, what does that look like to you? What does that mean to you? Does that stir emotion? Yeah. That's interesting. I like that. I mean, it'd be fun to use that as like an exercise. See what would come up. Yeah. I mean, they've been a huge inspiration for me. Like taking, taking this idea. I mean, like we talk about things like this all the time, like finding the, the perfect words to fit, uh, uh, like rhythm or melody or like yeah. finding the, like the best possible way to like the or like the simplest way to express an idea and I feel like they're they're getting at those like core philosophies um and the way that I just have seen them play with with writing across their albums and music um it's just something that I really wanted to like highlight and talk about because something that it's like a distinction of writing that I think a lot like you don't if you don't think about specifically you might never like notice that it's like really different and like specifically yeah. doing something that you can kind of see um yeah that it it's interesting i've i've heard of this before um the first time i ever heard of it and the only other time i i i've heard of it as like a concept or like an actual technique uh or approach was my buddy uh my buddy Kyle, uh, who we were in our first band ever together, uh, or in my first band ever, he was the singer of, and um, then spent a long time best friend, and he's an amazing vocalist and great writer. Um, and his last project, he told me that he wanted to approach it to where like he wasn't so much focused on what the, on like writing these stories in the songs but in just the song like having like a feeling to it or an emotion and then just putting words in that match that feeling or emotion Mm. and the and fit over whatever melody he felt over it like that just being the only thing and then at the end it's it's kind of like just it's almost like a slam poetry type thing like a like a you know um if it's if it's like conveying something sexy it's like it's like breath on my neck uh you know like uh slick silk you know all the like like all these things like dripping lips you know and and it puts you there and you you like you you can put yourself there and you basically create the a sexy memory or a fantasy that you have that matches those words and so you go along for this ride but it's not that it's not necessarily about anything other than this feeling right that's fascinating yeah. it is I, ever since he told me about that i was like i remember i remember being like i really want to try writing a song like that i really want to try writing a song like that then totally forgot about it never did anything and now you're saying it and now again i'm like ooh, i want to try that that sounds cool i got i had a lot of fun with the with the challenge with last last week's challenge Mm-hmm. Um, and I also, uh, I got a lot of really good feedback on, on my voice acting reel. Oh yeah. That was <laughs> really that fun. Been? Yeah. I, I posted it on, uh, on my, my Instagram, my Facebook and got, uh, I got a bite this guy, um, this guy who he runs a, a, a production company and his dad is a, high up like a uh, voice acting uh, engineer or producer and he's done like he's worked on like a-list movies and uh and he does like video games and stuff like that too um and the this guy was like hey you your stuff sounds great like uh you should i, I think that my dad would be like really into hearing your stuff like let me connect you and i was like okay and so, please and he did. He, he connected me. We have. He hasn't responded yet. And I, I did the old like, he connected me to him. And then like a day passed, and and he hadn't responded. Like his dad hadn't responded yet. And so like, just like I'm like, <laughs> I like I, I was I was relaxed and having a good time, like feeling good. And then and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna break the ice myself. I'm gonna come through. Hey. Thanks for the introduction. Nice to meet you. Let me tell you about like how into this I am, all this stuff. And I put, a, I, I did a very excited uh, introduction of myself yeah. to him. 
Yeah. And I still haven't heard anything back. Mm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we'll see. But it was still yeah. just cool, like just a little bit of affirmation of like just putting it out there, just like letting people know. You never know who, who's going to hear it and be like, hey, I want to connect you to someone. Maybe this turns into something. Maybe it doesn't. But um, he's uh, he sent me a, a video that he did of one of his games that he worked on. And it was like they were monster voicing in it in the studio. And uh, getting to see like all these different voice actors who are like, and t- they're talking about their technique and how they're like, yeah, I, l- I love coming in and seeing a character that doesn't have a voice and seeing how they move. And, and it's like, and like, so I'm like, whenever I, whenever I voice a character, I like to get in the posture that they are. <laughs> and like, and that brings out a different voice and like, and if they're like really skeletal or something like that, then it's going to be like this screechy voice. But if they're like, you know, and, and, and like then seeing them in action, I was like, holy shit, that is so cool. And it got me thinking, I was like, I want to do a monster reel, just only monster voices, like monster sounds and all this. And then I was thinking like, oh, I want to do a power up reel of like all just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about uh, tossing it out at, out at right guys and being like, "Hey, I need I need um, I need attack names that <laughs> I have not used yet." You know, like just make I, it the challenge. Just yeah, make it, just make it the right guys challenge. Just like <laughs> write some fun attack names. <laughs> Give me some attack names if you like. <laughs> Crystal Spire, <laughs> you know, like, and and just like. Yeah, I want to do a whole reel of just like seeing how insane I can get on those. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that 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 in that side of of my headspace has been just spinning with that. Um, and then uh, what we're gonna get to a little later here has been really got my juices flowing, and I'm getting really yes. excited about too. So yeah, our segment. I'm excited about starting this this new topic yeah you ready to dive in um sure yeah let's do it yeah okay all right so um we are starting a series a podcast series um that was gonna be a three-parter right this being the first part what is gonna be three parts just this uh this series of this topic we're gonna go <laughs> okay. <laughs> well then, I this I thought or right, two wait. parts. I, I I didn't start a never started timer for the thing before. I I'm gonna start a stopwatch, but I already missed thing. Whatever. Um, weren't we saying like that this alien thing we wanted to be like a novel or like yeah. a novella? So that's gonna yeah. be longer than like three. Episodes. No, we're not going to finish it in three episodes, but just we're like, like, sh- like the developmental stages of like, okay, this is our first outline. And then like, after we work on it for a week, like going through and, and developing those little, the, each point of that, and then going into like, maybe we have a finished chapter by the third one. And it's like, this is like, this all came from this one seed. And then we can we can will also everybody's challenges will be growing at the same time. And like, I just feel like that could be cool. And then okay. we could table it and we, we could, you know, move on to other topics, but you and I are still working on us in the background and we could bring it, bring it up. And in- I feel like, I feel like why not let, because like we both have so many projects going, like we both have our music. That's kind of like the yeah. main thing we're trying to get back into inspiration and finish songs. And then, you have Randy and and uh, yeah. other projects, and and then this is like our like we now have a like a, a book writing project that's like yeah something that we can both be talking about in tandem with all our topics going forward. Yes, so like I think that this will just become the foundation for whatever we want to talk about in yeah. future weeks, and so this um, maybe that- isn't. And that's that, that, that like makes... a three week thing. This is just like we're starting something as right guys that is going to, yeah, be go forward on our channel. Okay, okay, in perpetuity. All right. All right, I think I have a better way of of introing this. Sure. Um. So. Uh, 
Yeah, and so we're starting this uh, series of sorts where uh, this episode and the next episode um, uh, and and into into who knows perpetuity that you'll we'll be hearing about this and touching on this. Um, though we are starting a story development series and yes. um, a technique that Ben and I uh, kind of came up on, or I, I don't know if we. Yeah, I don't know what it from, is. <laughs> we've heard we've heard about it from different places and different people, and we've been trying to um, to figure out what to call it. Yeah, we, and, we 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 heard about it, got excited, and then tried yeah. to figure out what that was, and found out that's not what they were talking about. And then we we're like, "But wait, this is a cool this is a cool approach." So, if you if this sounds familiar, if you know what this is, or if there is a name for it, please tell us. But we're calling it seeding. Uh, we are going to, we created a, a, a seed story and basically coded the DNA of what this story is going to be in the most like compacted, uh, macro form, uh, that we're going to start that, that we came up with. And then the next episode, we're going to grow it. And then the next episode, we're going to grow it some more. And we're just going to, we're going to approach it that way. Like the whole story in full growing it at once kind of like a seed into a tree yes yeah shout out to um my friend dahi who did tell me about this about this idea and he also played saxophone on the right guy's theme yeah which that right guy's theme has now been updated for the this episode and last episode you can now hear with saxophone on youtube and on spotify you'll hear the full thing at the end of the episode um, just wanted to give that quick shout out there because uh, it, it hadn't been edited by the time we recorded last episode. I only finished it before I put the episode out, so I didn't get a chance to say it on air. But yeah. now the announcement's out. The theme song will be released on Spotify sometime probably in the next month. Uh, oh, I can't at wait. Some point. be jamming yeah. that thing all the time. It's called Writer's Block Party. Uh, <laughs> that's good. By I by by Ayumi. Yeah, that'll be on my Spotify. Yeah. Well, okay. So I, why don't you, why don't we take everybody back to like the origination of this talk? Yes. Like how did how you were describing it to me on our uh, on our just call? Yeah. Uh, our our discussion call before, and then yeah. and then and then where we kind of went for that and how we landed at what we're gonna do now. Yeah. So it's this kind of idea of of, uh, of editing as much as you can in stages to kind of keep keep your eye on the prize of like starting from a point where you can see the whole idea as one idea and then scaling it up in a way that you still kind of can maintain that scope in a way and then hopefully be able to see the whole thing even as you get into detail in some way and maybe that's not the main point of it but that's what i see as a really cool feature because essentially what we're doing micah is if is it's an epic zoom in You've seen those zoom ins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Epic zoom ins. You can start with the universe and then go down to like an atom, right? Oh, and I so, love that one, by the way. We need a link to that. It's so good. Yeah, we should, we will we won't probably put it up on the screen, but <laughs> sometime a zoom in. Check out some zoom ins. We'll put some links out. Yeah. Or Instagram or something. But um uh we start with talking about uh and this is Noah. This is certainly nothing new. A lot of screenplays start with a log line, right? Starting with the most broad possible idea that you can of describing your story in like one or two sentences. And um, the next phases as you flesh that out are where this becomes, in my mind, like really mind blowing, which is these like phases of editing that never have existed to me as a person. Because I kind of take an idea and then i try to just like write it the way i would be reading it as a reader like character blinked and said xyz and then shrugged and like you yeah. add flavor and like all the stuff what this process is supposed to do is like stripping away your ability to get yourself lost in those weeds and so it's like your first your or one of your first drafts after you do that just like couple sentence synopsis um your draft becomes like a really general just like like a sprint to like a sprint to the different points 
Yes, you're describing like like the wizard the wizard does this and the king doesn't like that because X, Y, Z. And so he declares war on X kingdom. These war, 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 yeah. conflict, yeah, conflict, conflict. Yeah, fights will be like clash, clash, bang, bang. Character dies, uh, pirate dies, um, ship heads off into the night. Falls uh, in next. love with someone on ship, you know? Yeah. Like- <laughs> right, so like breaking down the story into the, into the most like simple building blocks to, to show what the scenes are. Yeah, and you're not you don't have to think about it at all as a writer. You're liter you're like a machine program, just like outputting whatever is like yeah. the thing that happens next. Um and then from there, um, there there certainly could be different approaches to like how you began doing the the more intense editing stages. What what I love and, and the idea that I love from this and what we were talking about um at, at one point was and taking the ideas that you uh, love at that point, you you have this story where all the scenes are kind of beat for beat, uh, fleshed out in a yeah. way. The, the action is there. You know where you it's going. Kinda, you can kind of jump around to any scene that you want to work on. Yeah, Maybe which like, will probably free sounds... up writer's block big time where you're like, man, I wanted to work on the scene, but I'm just drawing a blank. I'm going to zoom out and then zoom back in on this spot, which I know where this spot is starting and ending. Mm-hmm. I know what I know this guy's going to meet this guy and then clash, clash, bang, bang. What's that going to look like? I'm just going to write a fight scene, but you can just kind of hop around. You have this organization, this map of, of how it's going to look. Yeah. The, the, and you, the, you work on it and then you work on one thing, you get an idea for an earlier part and then it's easy to add in, right? Yeah. You haven't worked on that. You haven't developed that part out yet. You just add some more clashes and bangs. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, whenever uh, you were trying to think of what this thing was called, you said you said uh, you said it was like some kind of prototyping, and that made me think about uh, just like in 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 fabrication and and design and invention and stuff like that and engineering, you have rapid prototyping, and rapid prototyping is very much just like okay, this is not how we're gonna do it, but this shows the idea. And, and like, I don't know how we're going to manufacture this. I don't know how we're going to go on large scale, but we need a proof of concept. I need a rapid prototype. And it really, I liked that name. And I, I was Googling that. I was like, that's got to be a thing for writing. And that is the best word for it. Like literary rapid prototyping, like uh, story prototyping, anything like that. None of it brought up <laughs> what I was looking for. But that specifically what is what like really inspired me on this idea and i think i want to really like uh to pump that up as like a part of whatever we're trying to 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 invent here or not invent just discover and for ourselves and um and learn this like seeding being like you create a seed through kind of rapidly prototyping a story in your head and then you write this like three, four sentence, uh, macro overview of that. And then you jump in and rapid prototype every like blip point. And then you, it kind of like a constant, like zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. Um, and then like letting your brain just run and not get tripped up on the details or like, okay, okay. Goes into an end, uh, you know, gets punched in the face, like unleashes this power clash clash bang bang in burns down you know like you know and, and then you and then you're like and then you're on to the next scene like meets chick on the way chick is a sorcerer uh uh get into a fight you know bob clash clash bang bang or kiss kiss love love whatever you know like and just just running through it and it's kind of just kind of like freeing up your imagination to just like just run and yeah. um so that's so basically we uh we decided we were thinking like well how what's the best way to like this is really cool like this would be cool to do as a whole topic or, or as like a, a topic and like a segment and we we're like how can we do a segment and then it was like well what if we just what if we put proof of concept and just did one between the two of us why don't we pass one back why don't we rapid prototype some story together by pat by texting back and forth and then we'll put our heads together about how to write a a macro a, an epic zoom out of this mm-hmm. whole story and then how about over the next like so how, however many episodes we 
we continue to return to this and watch it grow as we zoom out and zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, and just see where it goes. Yeah. Just develop, continue to edit it as with you guys on the podcast. Yeah. Um, in public, on the public eye, just yeah. this writing project as an experiment and a lesson for this whole topic. Yep. And you'll see this show up in, in our Discord in the Writer's Workshop different parts of it and everything. So we're, we're looking for feedback and uh, it's just going to be a really fun community experience. And who knows, maybe we'll have a, a book one day of this. I was like, man, yeah. I remember when they started that and I, that was my idea. Like, you know, or I can totally see it turning into a novella. And from what I know about it so far, I'm so excited. And I don't even know, like, how should we start talking about? The I just would just story. dive straight in. Okay. So, Okay, so the why don't we just hop into our text? Um, the uh, the first text that I sent Ben was um, let's see, and I was still because like you know like like we say constantly like we're not pros like we're just people who love writing and trying to figure it out as we go. Um, so I didn't even know if I was doing this right. I was just like, man, I kind of got a story idea. I want to get this. I want to see what he thinks. Get this rolling. Uh, oh damn, we had a lot of a lot of text on this. That's awesome. We were we were really running. Uh, okay, I just said, Flash character is violently soaring through space. Flash character is entering atmosphere. Flash ground quickly approaching. Flash strange beings surround character. Flash character underneath pile of dead creatures on cart rolling through strange city gates flash character being washed and put into bed strange beings say rest flash character asleep and then uh and then i was like i was like powerful being with amnesia falls from sky and lands in a fa fantasy medieval sword and board land is nursed to health by a couple who own in maybe lives and works in in maybe conflict crisis happens awaken small part of of being's power and then we just started going back and forth and like, like, what is this? What's this being look like? What's this? All this stuff. And, uh, yeah. Like, like, so whenever I sent that to you, like what, what would you, what'd you think? What, what was, what was your process? Yeah. I mean, like ultimately I'm getting something and I'm, uh, it's so to me, it, it felt obviously fantasy, right? Character falls from the sky. Like there's like a prophecy, every hundred or thousand years or not a prophecy there's just like this this maybe happens every so often like um maybe people are like one of the things that you had written in another text was that maybe this is something that happens every hundred years maybe these beings can live a thousand years and so i'm thinking of like i was thinking about what the being would be mainly at that point and i was like i was like so if it's like fallen from the sky like we we wouldn't necessarily we wouldn't it we wouldn't necessarily have to have a character that's like just like a he or a she because right. like it could just be like a an being. alien like an alien and i was like what if it was just like the most stereotypical alien and i remember micah <laughs> had like it recently told me about like <laughs> informed me of gray lore <laughs> which is oh like, yeah the grays gray, dude grays are like the official name for that type of alien with like the big brown black eyes and like triangular kind of gray heads huge head spindly arms and so the first text that i sent back to micah was just the character should be a gray in a fantasy world of elves and dwarves and my my head exploded because i sent that and then like in the back of my mind i was like it would be it would be so sick to see a gray hanging with like elves and dwarves and like like it's kind of like kind of like a, a genre merge of sci-fi and fantasy but like like i don't know like and and then and then and then we had the discussion of like i was like oh my god dude you read my mind how sick would that be to have like aliens typical aliens existing amongst like as as like a as like a race of lore in in the fantasy worldscape, you know the yeah. fantasy verse, and, and, and yeah. so after after that, I where my mind once we kind of established this character should be gray. I was like, 
now I need to contextualize why. <laughs> yeah. Why a gray and why others in the past have come. Right. And I'm thinking about a story and, and how stories are interesting and, and building conflict. And so I was like, I want there to be some threat. There's some threat that no one is prepared for. And this guy's going to be the only one who can help them. Um, and I was thinking about that threat more and more and how there's grace on the planet and coming to the planet. And I was like, what if, what if he has amnesia because his ship crashed and, and all their ships crash because they're trying to send ships into the atmosphere and they're trying to gain data on how to get a ship to land and they haven't gotten it right yet. So throughout the millennia, there's just these ships showing up and grays appearing. And then, and, and they're and they're all crashing from like like from like war, like terrible catastrophic tr crashes where the alien dies to like yeah. different levels of of the alien surviving but the ship being demolished and then you land on him and he's the latest one to land and like the ship didn't actually completely incinerate and he wasn't like mangled he just got amnesia from the crash yeah so I'm like Michael what if what if they're sending what if they're sending more grays? But like he was the he was the last he was the the most perfect sample yet. Like they sent it, they sent his ship and it almost landed. It just crash landed. And now they're gonna send more that actually land with aliens who haven't lost their memory. And their directive is like to conquer the planet. And so yes. <laughs> and so we uh, I mean, there's so much more to to go over. I oh yeah, yeah. Back to you. To okay, okay. So yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, yes. Uh, and so we just start going back and forth in this. What like we we have conversations about like, okay, should you know it's a gray? Should that like, uh, should you know how should that be? And and then we just kind of we just decided we're like we're like I think it'd be so cool to just where you knew. Where it was like, kind of not, not hand fed to you, but pretty obvious breadcrumbs that you could put together. Like, is he a gray? Like, is he like a just a an actual alien? Like, uh, and and then then it was like, okay, let's talk about magic. Uh, and and then and then it was like, it was like, okay, like definitely want him to be like this powerful being. He, we we decided that you know early on in the prototyping some kind of power would awaken what's his power uh and ben had the great idea of his like he's like okay well let's stay sci-fi with this and let's have it like gravitational manipulation like that like he can like uh manipulate gravity around him and all this and i was like yeah, yeah. that's that's sick and and you know they always talk about uh like gray's like like speaking like speaking into your mind like they can they have like telepathy and everything and they can like speak to you without moving their mouth and it's like okay so he can he's got to, he's got potential powers that could awaken like gravitational manipulation uh telepathy all this and we're like okay okay um and then it went from like okay so does he does he uh does he we we knew that we knew that we really liked the idea of so this this typical alien, stereotypical alien hanging with elves and dwarves. We knew we well, we want him to meet elves. We want him to meet dwarves. We want him to meet people like like humans. Um and and then and then Ben was like Ben was like oh or, or no it's, and it's, I was like I was like okay so what if these things the people there don't know why they're there, but these things have been landing on the planet for millennia. Right. And it's very, it's, it's not, it's, it is very rare, but it's not so rare that like, like maybe like your great granddad would have told stories about the gray that his, that he knew, you know, as these things like, like come, like as people find them and bring them in their culture, they basically learn that the, that these are very powerful beings and they come up with their own kind of religions around these like beings falling down and it's like this great boon to your society and you were supposed to you take it in you care for it 
and you teach it your directive because they're basically blank slates and you can raise it to believe whatever you want and then all and then now like fast forward and some of the and, and like the the most powerful powerful civilizations and kingdoms all had some kind of a gray influence in it and behind them there's there's probably a gray in there somewhere you know uh and so this so everybody's basically trying to imprint what they should be and what they should believe and this guy is the least damaged but he still has amnesia and uh basically starts to find out like figure wants to figure out who he is and um and so yeah it, it's a, and to do that yeah he has to uncover the pieces of his ship that right have scattered around the the planet or the count the kingdom wherever he fell and the this is the the most advanced ship that they've sent to date with their their projections have gotten more and more accurate with every time they've sent an alien into the atmosphere of this planet and so this ship survived better than any other before they'd all been obliterated or completely disintegrated upon entering the atmosphere and so he because he he sort of uh he he's able to wake up dust himself off more effectively than aliens in the past he's not imprinted by an entire culture and like sort of brainwashed to their ways he like micah said wakes up and wants to learn about himself and his quest and so ultimately he 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 finds out the regions that his plane crashed in somehow and you know we want him to be meeting with and interacting with all these characters we were like you know, one, they, there should be like a, a, a piece of the plane in each like race's kingdom. So like in the, in like the elven woodlands, yeah. uh, he has to go and, and meet, like meet with the elf king where he's like sort of learns about the elves, like beautiful ways of like living at peace with the environment. And that like reawakens like his love for like sustainability and like science and research. And like, he's like, he's really taken with like their ways of like living with the planet. And he is like sort of charmed by the elves and he really likes the elves. And then there's a piece of the plane that hit a mountain and went underground into like this dwarven settlement. Yeah. And then he, and the elves and he, hate the dwarves, but he goes and visits the dwarves and <laughs> right. learns this thing that he appreciates industry and appreciates of them. Right. And yeah. How they have all this like technology they're building and they're, they're the way they're exploring the inside of their planet reminds him of the way that his race has, has taken to exploring the stars. And I mean, outside of his memory, obviously, yeah. but subconsciously, it's just, it, it's ringing harkening, something harkening back to whatever his biological instinct is for that kind of exploration and discovery. And so they, so the dwarves win him over in the same way. Maybe they're the only ones who have actually taken his, his ship technology and begun to integrate it into their own work. And they're like, they really appreciate and love what they've seen from the ship and, and they're able to communicate it back to him. And then his relationship grows really strong with them. And then the third one, um, could we, we, we've tossed around a few different ideas for things. Um, we talked about at one point, like the possibility of, of some grace being mistaken for frost giants and there being, like I a love frost, this, a frost giant continent that he at one point goes to perhaps under the assumption. And perhaps some people are under the assumption on this planet in general, that, that the grays that fall from the sky somehow are frost giants or connected to them. Yeah. Like, like, like he's, you said that and I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. And being like, like he, he's, he's kind of the first one to realize that he's different from the, the, he, he's helping the people who helped him and then they're pushing they're they're teaching him their agenda and he's kind of the first one to be like i don't resonate with this like there's something that's not right and then and then like they he learns of the frost giants and what everyone says of the frost giants he's like maybe i'm i, I maybe i'm a frost giant and goes and like visits the frost giants has this huge pilgrimage but gets there and realizes Oh, I'm nothing like these people. And maybe like the elder of the frost giants brings him aside and tells of the story that all of these, these, these kingdoms fall like, like that, 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 that is prevalent in all the kingdoms. Like it's the story of the fallen ones. And if you find one, blah, blah, blah. And then he shows him the first piece of a ship. And maybe it's got like something that, that, like a handle or something like that. That's very weird looking. And he puts his hand on it and it fits perfectly. And he's like, Oh my God, 
I must find out more of this. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) we just were buzzing. And this all happened in probably like two hours. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Everything to to, to where we're at this this far in the story. Uh, And so then it was like, okay. All right. So that rapid prototyping worked. Uh, We got our juices flowing. Don't really know what's, where it's going to be. And then it was like, okay, let's think about how long do we want to make this? And it was like both of us unanimously think it would be sick to at least have a novella of this. Um, and even if it's the first of it, you know, maybe it, maybe it's a series, but okay. So we got an idea for length. And then, um, and then it was time to, you know, zoom out. So we zoomed in, we, we prototyped and then zoomed in and kept prototyping, prototyping, prototyping. And then now we zoom out and it's like, all right, now let's write this in about four sentences, our story. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so what we got is, um, the seed, the seed that we've created, the genetics and everything is, um, an alien is sent to conquer a planet, but he crash lands and loses his memory. He is not the first of his of his kind to be found this way, and those who find him have learned to see such a discovery as an opportunity for their people to gain power. His race has been unsuccessfully sending ships to conquer the planet uh, for ages, and he is proof that their technology is improving, and there are sure to be more. It's up to the main character to a assemble the evidence of, of his origin, b awaken his power, c uncover his past and D, rewrite his destiny. And that's our seed. And then, uh, I, don't, I don't know, what, 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 what do you think about the idea of having the sideboard thing? Like other stuff that just was like, oh, I want to see this and this and this and this and this just to kind of have over there. Uh, I made this I sideboard think, of like, what? I was just going to say, I think that this is maybe like, it, it, it's the, the 0.5 step to the next step. It's like okay. This is this the sideboard is like it's 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 going moving towards, on to step it's, two. It's moving toward the next step, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like kind of like blurbing out flesh elements for the story. Yeah. Um. But I threw out. I was like, just just ideas. Like okay, elves, dwarves, dragons, wizards, kingdoms, villages, gravitational magic, telepathy, love interest unites his people, or unites the fallen. Uh. And then it's like okay. These so are now, like spices to work into the recipe wherever you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as we zoom into one of the one of the points that we did in the seed, we can we already have spices to go tools that we can hey, reach let's, out let's to. Hit one, let's hit that spice cabinet. Let's grab. Let's put dragons in this. Yeah. Part. <laughs> Pass me that bottle of dragons. I'm gonna put a couple <laughs> drops in. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that that's our seed. And we're gonna grow this, and next time we're gonna we're gonna zoom in and and take one of the points and prototype further. It's super and then, exciting! Yeah, what should, dude. What should the what should the alien's name be? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll probably be given a name by the people right. who found him, but right. he'll probably also learn his real name, mm-hmm. or maybe he'll choose a name. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like he'll have many names. It'll be one of those like characters who he'll be able to say his name for like a while because like he was given a name by the elves and the name yes. by the dwarves and a name Mother by the of Dragons, Giants. Breaker of Chains, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Fallen One, you know, Uniter of the Fallen. Yeah, he should have like a really a really good memory, and it's like everyone who like gives him a title like he remembers it, and the next person he introduces himself to, he adds it on. <laughs> and so, it's but but but, really but, he, but he's he's completely indiscriminate of it and so he's like yeah. so he's like the fallen one asshole jerk <laughs> some call me jerk <laughs> jerk i've been called weirdo <laughs> big head uh <laughs> I've been known as one who speaks in monotone <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, uh, that's our seed. Next up, we're going to be reading some challenges from last week. And the challenges from last week were to, uh, start, and it's actually super similar in some ways. It's like starting a seed, 
it was to to start on um with a 50 word max sort of flash fiction story that's going to be built on in future challenges and so uh it we we had words that were specific uh, words that we had to base it on. And so if you think of this as a seed thing, uh, this is like the most distilled you could possibly get with the seed as we were starting with. Uh, I, I challenged Michael with the word oracle and he challenged me with the word spell. And so we each took that one word and tried to expand it into a 50 word max story. Um, and so we've had got all the other uh, right guys on board back home and so we've got some submissions as well under the same words of oracle and spell and uh these are things that uh they're going to expand and i think before we read these um counter to how we usually do things we probably should talk about what we're going to be doing in the next challenge because as mike and i read these we're going to be speculating and and talking about the ways we foresee them or moving forward. And okay. Yeah. I okay. Think. Good idea. Yeah. So yeah. So our, what, what we were, we're going to do with this is that the new challenge is that we're going to take our 50 word fantasies and uh, grow them. Now this isn't seeding. Like we talked about uh, that. We just talked about this technique. I don't know what you would call this technique, uh, but it's kind of like that similar but, yeah yeah we're gonna we're just gonna use our 50 word fantasy as our inspiration point as the 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 genesis jumping of this point, yeah. the jumping off point and then we're going to expand on it so your next your next challenge will be take your 50 word fantasy and develop it into a 500 word uh yeah let's story. say like 400 to 600 yeah okay yeah um somewhere around there um and now you, you can do that any way that you want like you could you could use that as your um as your inspiration point uh you could literally write before that and get to your part and then write after that um you could hop to another scene like like either way you're expanding on whatever you wrote whatever this this world is yeah and um uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just I'm really excited about this, and we got some. There's definitely some uh, submissions that already that I'm like, oh man, I already want to see this keep going. Mm -hmm. And I think that you did just say this, but um, if if the wording was slightly different, like you can have it can be the exact same story just with more detail if yeah. you want it to be. It yeah. can also be have prequel. It can also be sequel or anything like you were saying. Um, but yeah, it, if it's just the same thing, just with more detail, then that's good too. Um, it's just like based on your original 50 word thing. Yeah. 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 Write something to be 400 to 600 words. So in this, in this, like in, in the, the cool thing about this is that I think that we're going to, we're going to find um, kind of a new little superpower writing superpower of like, sometimes all you need is one word one idea one concept and it's like like so the real seed of this would be oracle and then it's like okay well what am i going to write about that well why don't you start with 50 words what's 50 mm -hmm. words that that and see what happens there and then like okay well now we got 50 words let's turn that into 500 words you know and then it's like and then as you go just seeing like from that one word how this tree of a whole story came out when if you were to look, read that, that, that story, you may be like, where did this come from? Like, where was the, and being like, oh, it came from one word. I was just thinking about one word in the beginning and then just did it in steps. Uh, but yeah, so let's, let's dive in. Mm. Well, since we're, these are just 50 word, uh, submissions, I think we can just, we can just read all of them and we'll just see if they, if, yeah. if, if they translate it to us, if we kind of see where they're going, you know, yeah. Just chop them up. Let's do it. All right. You want to go first? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm just going to pull up one here. I've got one from Shannon. All right, Shannon. All right. <clears throat> her grandfather's fountain pen was in her backpack's front pouch. It shouldn't be used for trivial things, but she needed practice. She reached in inside, felt cold brass contrasted against plastic pencils, then wrote on an empty page, forget. Was their homework due? The teacher asked herself. 
No, I suppose not. <laughs> so, I loved that one, and and her and her word was spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's on spell. Yeah, this was uh, something I I consistently say, but again, taking like doing like a modern story, especially if you have like magic in modern times, like this is just. Mm -hmm. This is a magic item being used to like get out of homework due. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun little demonstration and window into some particular little world and culture. Like this is obviously, um, she needs practice, right? Right. So think about like what that means in terms of her, um, mental model. Like are, yeah. are is this her, her parents are telling her to cheat in school to get better at magic. And so that's like, what are the priorities here? What is the the life set? Is this a person who's being trained for something other than a, a regular life, right? Right. Obviously having it, magic, you may be called to something abnormal, but. Is it that, or is it like, like who, like immediately I'm like, who was her grandfather? Like this is her yeah, grandfather's, her grandfather's pen. Like, fountain pen. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe the power is in the pen and uh maybe it oh, was passed right. down yeah it shouldn't be used for trivial things yeah totally yeah and like i i i could i could see this going so many different ways i could see it like may, what if her parents are dead she inherits this she you know has this pin um uh, she's she learns about her past her dad her grandfather was like a wizard or i don't know like well i don't know where this would go maybe he's an archaeologist and found this thing as a relic like kind of like an indiana jones thing where and it has this power and she's learning about yeah. it and uh she wants she's just i don't know i i, I yeah my, and, my, and, my mind races and in a in a in a short story sense you know of, of what we could maybe expect to see from this if it's expanded to 400 to 600 words obviously you're not necessarily going to see the, the grandfather's whole backstory but like there's plenty of other things that we might be seeing with this pen in the school, right? Even in that environment, like I'm yeah. seeing the pen, I'm seeing the pen getting involved in like social interactions. Uh -huh. Like I, I want to know like how specific you can get with because she just wrote forget, and obviously we're on a a word a pretty strict word count that's gonna the, whatever incantation of your spell is gonna be <laughs> protracted into as short of a thing as possible. But we we are expanding this, right? Seeing yeah. a little a little bit longer sentences written out on that thing. Yeah. So it, where, where the lines are. If you need practice, maybe that's one of the things you're learning. One of the key things is where is how much can I manipulate someone's internal world before it becomes a, a different thing altogether? Right, right. Maybe, maybe like it'd be interesting too if like forget was like an AoE effect because it's not mm. very specific. <laughs> right. And like all of a sudden everyone around her is like they were about to sharpen their pencil and they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, until yeah. she can get it like, like honed in. And uh, how much do you forget? Some kids just start speaking in gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I, I think it's a, it's a fun story. Really, yeah. really cool. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of room to, to see this one like grow in, in different ways. I'm super excited and like, like to like my mind has already gone in like all these different directions with like just the power and like how creative it is. It, it reminds me of death note kind of. Yeah. But yeah. Like but more, not more just possibility, not, not waxing right. people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So great job, Shannon. This yeah. Awesome. That's fun. I can't wait to see what you do with that. And yeah, is she gonna, this is one of those where I'm like, is she going to expand the 50 words to, you know, fill that in and make more detail or is she happy with, the amount of detail and liked like the punchiness of it and is are we going to hear more backstory about maybe her going to school mm -hmm. or afterwards yeah. or like yeah 10 I mean, you years know, maybe, later dude, dude, or, you, we've seen we've seen amazing things get fit into these 400 to 600 words maybe she does do the grandfather's whole backstory <laughs> who knows yeah, yeah. <laughs> um awesome all right so i'm going to hop in on low b all right this is this is this is one of my favorites. Um, he didn't see it. I don't see it. He looked back. Ferris met his eyes. She arched a brow. He turned reluctantly back to the orb. No point trying to out, out stare an owl. Last chance, Gavin. He whispered. He looked again. 
Nothing. Perfect. Every hair stood on end. Oh. <laughs> There's so many ways it could go. I know. <laughs> yeah. And his it's word was Oracle. Mm-hmm. But I, I just I loved I loved starting off with comedy and it was so it's so good, like situational. He didn't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. It's so he's so Ferris is an owl, right? Uh-huh. So he looks I, I, back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. We're guessing. <laughs> mm-hmm. are she and she are do owls have brows? I guess that's a clue. Do owls have eyebrows? <laughs> I don't know. I actually I never put that no point staring at owl. I kind of thought that was maybe like a, a oh, a, just a phrase. Like out stare an owl. Like he's like maybe the ball that he's looking into is just like this. Nothing's gonna change type thing. Or but, this, but it's it's when he turns back to the orb, right? He turns back to the orb. No point in trying to out stare an owl. We, uh, yeah, you wouldn't yeah, be saying there's yeah, no yeah. point in doing the thing he's about to do, right? It would be no point in doing the thing he just stopped doing. I yeah. Think. I don't see it. He looked back. Ferris met his eyes. So he's looking at Ferris at this point. She mm-hmm. arched her brow. He turned reluctantly back to the orb. No point in trying to. Okay, so may... I think Ferris is an owl. Right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Now there's an owl in the room? I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, and so this is maybe part of his, like, it maybe his familiar, you know, in Harry Potter, obviously. <sighs> everyone's got a, their cat, their rat, their owl, yeah. or whatever. Or maybe this is part of, maybe it's a familiar, but maybe it's also part of the spell somehow. Maybe the owl is connected to this oracle ability. Um, but he's talking, so he's talking to himself, right? I think last chance Gavin. So the, the character's name is Gavin. Yeah, he's talking to himself. There's, there's Gavin, the dude, and Ferris, the owl, we're, we're mm-hmm. thinking. And he's trying to look into this crystal ball. Yeah. And then at the end, uh, touches it again. Last chance, Gavin. Looks again, nothing. Perfect. And then every hair stands on end. Something happens right as we cut away. Yep. And he goes, oh. Yeah. He saw. He sees it. He finally sees something. Right. And you know, this could be, this is where it's like, it could be anything. And like, there's the, there's definitely like, I imagine it's setting up to, he's seeing something in the orb. It could be a tribe of barbarians just dropped in and maybe yeah. he's getting a, a sixth sense that there's some new threat behind him. And if like talking about seeing this in terms of sequels, I guess what I mean to say when just like this could go anywhere, it's like, this is the, uh, the ultimate cliffhanger setup where it's yeah. like, we've, we've, we've rolled out the red carpet for low B. Yeah. Or he's rolled and, out the red carpet for himself. Yeah. And, <laughs> and and there's not really even a tone on it. If there is a tone, it's kind of like it's kind of lighthearted, but that could be grim fantasy. Exactly. You know, it, like, yeah, like, that it could, could be, be just lulling sarcastic. you into dropping you into like the most disgusting, like dark fantasy <laughs> horror drenched yeah. scene that you've ever seen. It would be tonally like you'd be like, Yeah, that works. Yeah. Like is is he does he know what he's doing at all? It doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing at all. Um, <laughs> or uh, like 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 this Gavin, you know. So where how, does he know this owl? He knows Ferris. So and and like there. So that's not strange to him. Is Ferris his owl? Um, uh, where are they? Like I kind of, I kind of have this picture of of like, um. They broke in, like he and his owl broke in someplace, and and she's leading him to this crystal that that they're gonna use to see something, and maybe they're they're running out of time. So he's like, gotta get this right, gotta get this right. Come on, look back, you know. Some reason, there's I, some sense of urgency. I feel. Yeah. Oh, for, yeah. For sure. Yeah. No. And him, it's his last chance, right? Oh, it's like yeah. So Gavin, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. Or there or is it a test? Is there. he in like a school and he's like about to mm-hmm. fail? And. Yeah. It yeah, no, be the like environment is thing. one of the things that's super up for grabs here, right? Like there's not, yeah. a, not a lick of, of is, is told about what is around us. And so we're left, it's left to our imagination. And so like my mind for some, for some reason, I guess it makes sense because he's talking to an owl. I just like, they were in like an owlery. What do you call it? What it was like a tower <laughs> where like the owls would roost or whatever. I like, like owlery. I know it's not it, but <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, the owlery. There's a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That so band you talked about could use aviary. owlery. Aviary. It, yeah. There you go. I like it. Um, but yeah, so I saw them in an aviary, but yeah, like seeing, seeing him in a classroom is perfect. 
yeah know, with the with the owl like harry potter style yeah or yeah or or in a in a dark throne room yep you know like at a or like like a witch's lair that they snuck into and mm-hmm. he's like trying to like figure yeah. out what's coming next for his village or i don't know it could be yeah. anything he could yeah. be in an attic you know and yeah and and the, and the way the way these are expanding like um like as a as a as a writer i don't necessarily know where my story is going to go whether i'm going to be adding something afterwards or adding a detail in the middle but it's like there could be things that get added here that are like details that um that once you once you see them in the full story it's like it's like well that was just skipped over in this but it's like yeah that's yeah. fine that's the point is it was like a shorter version but now he you could, see he like could just throw another like, detail yeah he could yeah. spend like 50 words on spicing the sub details on it or he could like that it's there and then continue yeah. straight from it or lead up there to could it. be there could be like literally a professor who in between him saying i don't see it and last chance gavin actually comes up and says this is your last chance and right. then he's like last chance and that could that could happen and it would just be like yeah like this was just the abridged version where that was yeah the so i'm so excited to have these and be able to read them back to back and see what decisions Same. people made of like oh he spent the extra 300 words just fleshing out the environment and showing us that oh he was in a throne room or an aviary or a classroom yeah this is yeah. a there's a now i just now i just see a more vivid picture of what these 50 words said before yeah uh Let's see it. The people who take that route, the people who end with that, like write everything that led up to that, and then it, that's like the last thing, or you know, whatever, whatever we do. Maybe, maybe people throw all five hundred words in the middle of their fifty word thing, where mm-hmm. you know it starts, and then there's all this stuff that happens, and then it goes to here. Like you can change your story any way you want. Um, but you just use this as like as your growing point. Yeah. Uh, All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and read another one. Just keep this going okay. here. Let's get it going. This is from Anna, right, guys? Veteran, <laughs> right, guys? Vet. <laughs> we need to uh, count this up. I think she may have earned her spot. <laughs> she's certainly on the leaderboards. Well, since the challenge started, this is the fourth. Okay. Okay. All um, right. And so we need one more after this. Yes, I believe so. I'll I'll re look into that again. I think this is the fourth. This could be the fifth, but I know this that it, wasn't. it definitely episode. wasn't before this. Yeah, the romance romance was episode six or seven. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, episode seven. Okay, and that's so when we, we that's started when we the announced. challenge okay. after that point. So I think this is the fourth one. I see. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, I will go back and count. <laughs> but uh, so this is a uh, Anna's. And this is based on Oracle, and the title of this is the Sybil, which she wrote Oracle in parentheses. Is Sybil mean Oracle? Yes. Maybe. Okay. Cool. She sits before the hot springs, draped in silks, inhaling sacred vapors. On her gates are inscribed the words, Know thyself. She is the Sybil, blessed and cursed by the sun god, lord of oracles. Come, traveler. The graying maiden will sing rhymes telling you of your destiny. <sighs> Yeah, that's a great one. Very cool. Yeah. Knowing the, like the classic oracle draped in silk made in. Inhaling, uh, vapors. inhaling the vapors. Yeah. Right. I think about like 300 when uh, when they have the oracle, that whole oracle scene. I forget. So remind cool. me. Um, basically, he goes before before he goes to meet uh like Xerxes troops like take his his 300 to to confront them he goes to, and consults the um I forget what they're called but they're they're like this council of like um disgusting uh priests or something like that and they have oracles that they these oracles like they breathe in these like these fumes and then they give the priest a word and they basically foretell the future, and then they're like, "You will not succeed. Sparta will burn." And he's like, "Damn it!" <laughs> yeah, the, I I was traveling somewhere in Europe a few years ago, and we saw like somewhere that there was the the Oracle of Delphi, I think, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I learned about is like uh was a woman essentially who was like in uh uh 
shrine that were where there were like natural gases coming in oh. that were something akin to like a spray paint inhaling like the fumes of like a spray paint can basically. whoa um and when, and you I, went to, when you went to see her you'd basically trip and be like wow well, this she, is real. Would. She, she would she would yeah and i just looked it up to like get the the name of it and everything and um they literally uh, it says in 1927 french geologists surveyed the oracle shrine and found no evidence of a chasm or rising gases <laughs> <laughs> Back myth busted. <laughs> oh, actually, oh, now a four year study of the area in the vicinity of the shrine is causing archaeologists and other authorities to revisit the notion that intoxicating fumes loosen the lips of the Pythia. Ah, Pythia <laughs> is another word for the yeah. a, a future seer. It's yeah, awesome. the study found evidence of hallucinogenic gases rising from a nearby spring and preserved within the temple rock. Damn, that's so cool. <laughs> that yeah. is so cool. Crazy. Man. Can't blame him for thinking that she was a witch. <laughs> so yeah, great. I mean, great submission. I was immediately thinking back to the Oracle of Delphi and like just like a really intense kind of grounded um, idea of what an Oracle is. And like, it's something yeah. that it feels very um, like primordial and like, yeah intense <laughs> i it but i noticed like we only it it looks like this is from the view of somebody that she's calling traveler uh and so it's going to be interesting to know like okay so uh, to, to see how she expands this you know mm -hmm. if if we get to know who she's who this traveler is like like who's right who's, it, is the traveler there or is yeah the, the tone is that this, we have is right now written is, in a book somewhere that someone's yeah. reading yeah it could it could and we we could see a total transformation of the tone that's just like takes us out of this this sort of narrated narrated descriptor yeah version of this story when we could see this story told from the perspective of some kid who's just who snuck in there by accident like what you know? what if it was like uh, <laughs> what if the next line was like, "Hey, give me that!" He snatched his magic card out of his hand and read it. He's like, "I've never seen the Oracle," <laughs> like, and, and this is just the flavor text on the bottom, <laughs> yeah. of, the bottom of a magic card. <laughs> For four hundred to six hundred words story about a kid who prints his own magic card to <laughs> cheat in tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's he, totally a, it's that would be fair game <laughs> it would be totally fair game he does like uh he, he he studies the other people's decks and prints a deck that will beat them and he foretells <laughs> he foretells beating them he is the oracle <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man i love it i can't wait to see where this goes this is a very like all these all these little seedlings are like uh they could go in any direction yeah um, yeah. that's awesome. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do Tim H. Here we go. Abyssal child. Come thou sunder of heaven, abyss clothed in charnel winds, birth cries, heralding hopeful perdition. Man yearns for heaven only when, when tired of hell. Alas, he endureth much. Salvation hath come, skewered by heroes, denied, fell eternal recurrence. How needless this suffering, what need, God, when man slays, what need, what need, God, when man slays the devil himself? Okay, I'm going to read that again. Mm -hmm. Come thou sunderer of heaven, abyss clothed in charnel winds, birth cries heralding hopeful perdition. Man yearns for heaven only when tired of hell. Alas, he endureth much. Salvation hath come. Skewered by heroes, denied. Fell eternal recurrence. How needless the suffering. What need God when man slays the devil himself? Great work, Tim, as usual. Uh-huh. The, the prose and lines are really excellent. This one, what is happening in it? 
What is it? Yeah. Who the heck knows? And dude, it's so cool to me to see the wide spectrum that we're getting when you look at something like um like what Shannon wrote for her is a very specific scene that's grounded in a school with a teacher and a character with a name and a grandfather. And we have like familial lines and like magical objects set up and like uh-huh. a scene in a place with walls. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> then, then you have this, which is just like poetry. Yeah. Essentially like, like, yeah. wor- like words around ideas waxed into like, full sentences that feel like they roll into logical ideas somehow. Yeah. And, um, and it's like both of those things obviously can be expanded on in a hundred different ways. Um, and so seeing them next to each other is really exciting and we'll be yeah. able to look at how, how you can expand different types of writing and what that looks like, what these t- different types of transformation and transmutation will, will look like. So, on this one though, I, I don't I don't even know if it's spell or oracle. <laughs> and uh like I he 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 wrote us something saying that he was doing kind of both. And I'm still like it definitely it has that that like that feel of uh the, the, of spell speak it definitely the, has that the feel of like the uh, i don't know like telling of the future what is to come birth cries heralding hopeful perdition the, uh, the way i see this is it's sort of like a math problem where like um there's a lot of variables set up in place that are just like labeled as xyz and that's done through flowery language essentially and like not directly saying who the characters are, not setting up like the plot elements specifically. It's like placeholders for those things because it's like abyss clothed in Charnel winds could mean a thousand different things. Yeah. But if we, as, as the two people who assign the challenge, if we were to take this and be like, okay, let's start assigning names to these variables to make it fit the challenge there's a hundred ways we could do that i think that's true like i I want this to be a story about a spell and an oracle i can look at this come thou surrender of heaven abyss clothed in charnel winds sunder of heaven yeah okay sunder yeah so like they defeated heaven yeah abyss is a person then abyss Mm -hmm. is who they're talking about so like a abyss clothed in charnel winds is the sunder of heaven and they're being heralded right now so that's a prediction that's an oracle. So prediction. maybe somebody's like, or it could be a spell. They could be casting the spell that summons. They could be summoning, yeah, this demon or whatever. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah, seeing it. I'm seeing it. Yeah, birth, birth cries heralding hopeful perdition. Like uh, the birth of something could certainly be a spell or ritual of any kind. Yeah, right? this thing could be just entering the mortal coil. Yeah. Man yearns for heaven only when tired of hell. Alas, he endureth much. Salvation hath come skewered by heroes denied um you know this is all more things about predicting the future talking about things that have come before like this is just the voice of an oracle in a lot of ways yeah true it could Uh, be either that's true like this is going to be really interesting to see again yeah. Where the hell he goes with this? Like, it sounds like a summoning, and so it does in, sound in like a lot summoning. of ways. A That's summoning sick. is is predicting the future and casting a spell, mm-hmm. and it's cer- certainly an oracle type voice talking about the the problems in society that this summoning is purportedly going to fix. So yeah, <laughs> and certainly some spell speak going on in there. Right. Yeah, that's exciting. Awesome. All right, uh, take it away. Yeah, and uh, I guess this leads me to like a question of if we want to read doubles because some people sent two stories i don't think so okay (laughs) yeah so maybe maybe providing a little bit of your philosophy on that we want to be encouraging people to send in one story yes yes because uh that has been a a a theme there that we have been getting like multiples uh and we just can't we, we can't we can't read both of them on there and we don't know which one you're more 
stoked on, you know, like we would really like just one submission for each one. Um, and that way the, the flow keeps going and we know that, uh, we're yeah, not it leaving makes out it some... easier for us, like select in the selection process and, um, on the weekends that we are super strapped for time helps us with preparing as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. So next I will read, especially if we get up to like thousand word challenges and people send it in doubles and like God, well that's when i, I feel like it's less likely yeah, yeah it's true <laughs> yeah. um all right uh this is from jameson rune to sigil that was all hand the wizard pulled back as the bottle shattered on impact to his right the floor now showered with glass and jameson a voice called from behind somatics were spot on but your vocals could use some work. It was the bartender. <laughs> um, so Jameson provided a little bit of like background along with that. Yeah, that I, which I, I love. Read. Uh, yeah, his. Um, the, I think the context it provides is really excellent, and we'll be, go into our speculation about it definitely. Um, so he wrote, "This is uh, my trying my, or I, I wanted to go with the level one's tavern or the level one tavern." as a nod to many a D&D campaign setting. Um, starting in a bar. So, so, yeah, starting in a bar. And the idea being that this is like where characters go when they're really weak to just be starting their quests. Yeah. And so it's a bar full of people who are like kind of shitty practicing spells and like <laughs> yeah. spilling drinks. And the bartender just like, the bartender Bartender's just always knows there. more he about sees somatics this than they do just from <laughs> watching all the other level ones come through. <laughs> somatics is that that like what you would call um uh the the what would you call it? The hand part. Yeah, the gesture, it. whatever gesture yes. you do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the physical part of a spell, the physical part of the incantation. So it's like the yeah, the hand. And when part. playing D D, when you do when you cast a spell that has a, a somatic uh yeah. you, you have to do that or the the spell doesn't cast like so you're sitting there at the table with everyone and if, if this is your is this that would you be a, that would be a particular house rule but yeah that <laughs> that was that, our rule when you ran us through i i would definitely encourage that i think that that is like okay. a great way to build immersion i, I love it not seen that at many a DD table that is fact as far as i'm concerned and i've <laughs> i've done one DD campaign i think i know what i'm talking about <laughs> Uh, he also said that uh, it is also a nod to the right to right guys meeting at in the in the bar in the right guys bar. Yeah, which is awesome. It kind of made me feel like the right guys bar is a tavern now. <laughs> it's wait. So what would be the technical distinction there? Is a tavern like well, whenever I think tavern or inn, I think like fantasy. I think like uh, yeah, I think like a wooden gotcha. sign outside, and there's there's right. adventure. This thing this place right, is okay. full of adventures and stories. Right. Bars. Just the feel of it being yeah. called tavern, even right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was like if you're like now we have people st spending the night. And it's an inn too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh but man! Yeah. One day, whenever we get funding and we can do animations in the background, and you just have like some guy walk out of the back, and he's like a barbarian, and he walks off and steps up to the bar and orders something, and yeah come on yeah we're, we're dude, and, this thing into the sun. yeah lo looking looking at this as um looking at this story as something that could get expanded to 400 to 600 words there's like oh so yeah many, so many cool things that you can do in a level one's tavern like yeah i mean like when when it, i think about sorry oh no no keep going when i think about just expanding these in general you know taking a 50 to, to 400 to, to 600 words uh, like a big part of what that looks like to me is is taking what was just like a flash of an idea and turning it into a an actually like developed conflict. Yeah. Like, the, like in 400 to 600 words, you can no longer like just get away with like just doing one rune casting that kind of like goes wrong and like the bar. Yeah. Correct. Like, like obviously like you could like build that out to be like very flavorful and, and probably, but, but like to, to do 400 to 500 words, you're at least, ex if that's an entire story, you would expect to be able to set up like a, a some, some type of conflict and resolution in that yeah. amount of space, whether it's short or, 
or whatever. I mean, obviously we've had a lot of trouble fitting, fitting ideas into <laughs> any number of words, but, <laughs> but like you, you, you have the opportunity to build out, um, uh, an actual, uh, problem. So like what you, what, whatever you would see happen in a level one's tavern that could actually build out into like a crisis moment and like a climax and resolution. I'm just really excited to see like what that looks like with all these novice adventures or yeah. whoever, whoever's coming in. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And, and like, like already I'm thinking, okay, well, if this is a D and D setting, he's in a party who what's his other party members like i wonder if we're gonna get to meet like any of them mm -hmm. uh or is he taking this into the the sense of like it's kind of like um a character of a story who's just so happens to be in a tavern that's like one of these places with a lot of low level adventurers and is he mm -hmm. solo is this where he meets his crew is this part of a campaign what is his campaign like yeah uh there's yeah, so many there's like so much flavor that i i, I want to see about this if it's like level one to like a really well known campaign or story somehow, like he's it's it's a level one's tavern and you see like like Frodo and like Sam and Mary and Pippin walk in and they're like, Have you seen a wizard here? Like <laughs> it's the prancing like, pony for right. them, you know? Just like, like the yeah, exactly. Just the first leg of their journey. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see where that goes. Okay, let's see. Who we got? Anyone else? I don't think so. Wait. Uh, yeah, Brian. Yep, Brian. All right. Um, okay. This is uh, from Brian McNeil. The title is Death Has Boundaries, and the prompt is Spell. Summer in Hathranir. The battle ended now. His face, th his face, though blue and red, blood and death, was ever beautiful. Tears tracked my face and guilt racked my heart. Rage and love bid me speak the words. Forbidden. Fuck forbidden. A deep, bre a deep breath and they flowed. Then did his blood. Yeah, dude, this one is really cool. I'm so excited to see this one expanded with, I think, Summer and Hathranir just gets my mind. Like, <laughs> yeah, Hathranir is the, a great so the, yeah, name. Yeah, it is. And and it's like we were saying before about setting being one of the things that you don't normally get to see done necessarily in like a 50-word story. And seeing how this is done super impressionistically, like it's 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 not a full sentence. It's just the words at the beginning, then a period. It's like Summer right. and Hathranir. It's just like a, yeah. a visual you just have um, that to go off of and then you continue. Yeah. And then you have what you have built in the scene is like, um, obviously like it's, it's more of a snapshot than like a flow chart of thing to thing. It's like you have sort of this concept almost of, of the moment of, of battle of like two people who are in love. Mm hmm for whatever reason. Yeah, it definitely looks like there's some there's some betrayal. Like I got that too that like I, I, I was feeling the love interest thing too. Like that like and and like some kind of rage element. There's some like but maybe a betrayal. The he said forbidden forbidden's a, a, an interesting word like maybe they were Maybe they are forbidden or I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. Um, yeah. What do you think the words? So it says rage and love bid me speak the words. Forbidden. Rage, yeah. Fuck forbidden. And then so I and think then, it's and I love as, you. I think for it's forbidden because they're men. Maybe it could be. I That'd think be interesting. It, I think it's rage and love bid me speak the words that are forbidden, but fuck forbidden a deep breath and they floating doesn't say what the words were. Yeah. The, you, we I don't know what, we don't know what the spell was. So forbidden is not the spell. Maybe. Oh, true. Yeah, no, true. I forgot spell. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I keep seeing forbidden. Uh, like forbidden is, I think him describing what the word, like the words are forbidden. And it's like, Oh yeah. Cause he said, he said a deep breath and they flowed. So yeah. they plural, he's saying multiple the, words. Yeah. 
Um, but, and then his words flowed and then did his blood. So whatever he, he cast this yeah. spell and it killed him. Yeah. I mean, like I, in my mind, they're already fighting cause it's the battle ended now. His face though, blue and red blood and death was ever beautiful. So I think like I, in my mind, they've already been fighting there at the end of a bout and it's either the last stab into like the heart or it is a spell which i guess this is spell so there must be a or spell maybe going like off. oh man maybe like a maybe like a like a wolverine gene gray like i love you <laughs> like right that's what i was seeing at first but i but i think if it's spell it's got to be right like there's no other yeah. place that, that there's a spell in the story so like that must have been where he was putting it in i think i feel like the, the spell was said then too yeah so i don't know like I'm, 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 I'm guessing though. it's a like in a lot of magic worlds it's um it's like uh the a spell that will harm someone is uh -huh. like a, a, a illegal or like off limits like in in name of the wind oh like any, yeah any spell that is like will hurt someone is like called malfeasance right and it's yeah like, really, like highly punishable in like the highest order of law right so it's like this this could just be like spells are not so the title of this is death has boundaries <laughs> man there's so, just so many little easter eggs that i'm like yeah, what they, they, the they, hell this like, one I, this one i'm super excited to see where it goes because like there's so many sort of deep hooks that could be fleshed out like character relationship things yeah. that are like that's that are like very tense and like do do invite a lot more inquiry and explanation and so It'll be really cool to see how those things get fleshed out. Yeah, absolutely. That is going to be cool. I, I, like, do we get to know who these people are? What's the build up to this? What's after it? What was the spell? What did he say? Do, is, is he going to let us in on in any of that? Is it's just yeah. It'll be it'll be fun to see where that goes. All of these are going to be aha moments. You know, like whenever we read them back next week. I hope I hope everyone that we read I hope well we read everything that was submitted so uh, I hope everybody uh, does this next challenge because I really want to see where these go and share them yeah. it'll be fun to hear um, okay you're up oh me up <laughs> you up it's too dangerous the equations are incomplete even if you make it through your mind will be torn to ribbons the artificer raked his hair. By the time your equations are complete, half the great lord's Minutemen will be through that door. The magician reached forward. I'll take my chances. <laughs> oh, there's a lot here. <laughs> I I, also, I love your artificer voice. That was great. <laughs> Torn to ribbons. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I have this idea of these two characters just sitting in this room in my head. And like I actually have had this idea for a little while and I don't know what it is. I'm really excited to expand on it. Yeah. Um I this like I've been thinking about this scene since I started writing this song called The Magician's Secret. Um and I had my an idea to post it with like a little scene and write out the scene. And I just didn't, I just posted the song on my Instagram and it didn't have like a caption, but it was just going to be an instrumental and you could like read this little scene. Oh, about that's the cool. Magician and the artificer. Yeah. And so I sort of had the idea kicking around in my head, but I never like fleshed it out. And uh, then I got the spell thing and I was like, Oh yeah, that'll work. And I yeah. just started like tinkering with it and like, writing out like a few like things that they would say and it ended up being like too long and like i just like chopped it back into like the most basic possible interaction you two people could have <laughs> but so, like so the artificer is coming is making a spell maybe is working on the spell he's working I on the spell like, and he's got equations involved i like that too that that like he's working something out yeah what are these and equations? for whatever reason like the magician is way more ready to take these risks like i <laughs> i i really like the ideas of these characters like the artificer is this really careful like mathematical and like he's super exact like always wants to get like and he works with this magician 
yeah and they're like for whatever reason a team together but the magician's just like he's ready to take like every possible like yeah that is leap of faith that is a cool combination like maybe the art the artificer has this mind to make these things but he's too scared to do them himself the magician is just wants to push the yeah. envelope and he's brave and magicians and... you i think in fantasy and things you usually see us being like the bookish characters yeah but i really like the idea of the magician who's more of like a almost like a rogue yeah like really wants like in on the adventure and like is always trying to like get in the most dangerous places and like uncover the most exciting things it's kind of like an indiana jones of fa- fantasy yeah. magic you know like yeah and i like i like his his whole attitude about like hearing that his mind's going to be torn to ribbons and like weighing his chances, just like, I'll take my chances. <laughs> yeah. I reached forward. What's he reaching forward to, you know? Right. And who's the, uh, who's the great Lord and what are minute, like, like minute men, I guess are his soldiers and, mm-hmm. and they're through that door that's happening here. They're coming through that door. And the magician obviously thinks, they're trying to figure out how they're going to get out of this. And the magician's like, this is how we get out of this. He's like, no, it's not ready yet. He's like, I'll take my chances. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's sick, dude. I can't wait to see where you go with that. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, here's mine. Uh, I had Oracle. Ben dished that one out to me. Uh, my word count here is 49 words. How many crystals does she really need, Juro Wine? Well, how many gods do they worship, Juro? Nefta snipped. Juro thought, uh, over a hundred. Then that's how many. Now hurry up. Nefta turned and added, be careful, but hurry up. She changed tones and called, Sibby, dear, it's time. <laughs> she changed tones. Uh huh. So I basically, I saw like, uh, I saw like, the first thing I saw was like, okay, I I I was I was researching Oracle and I saw Sybil, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I was trying to think of what the name of this Oracle was gonna be, and then I was like, I was like, I was like, I don't do Sybil as the name, and then I was like. Sibby, like, oh, Sibby, that, that's a cute name. And I was like, ooh, what if it was like a little girl, like a little, little girl who, mm-hmm. and what if she doesn't know she's an oracle? What if she has this like split personality where uh, like she's basically being sold uh, to sorry. like, yeah, she's basically being sold in like, uh, like to this kingdom or whatever uh, where I, I see her as just being this cute little girl and then like when they uh arrange the crystals in the right way or whatever um uh, like the gods start speaking through her and she goes into a trance and kind of forgets everything she's just a mouthpiece but she doesn't know what she said and she forgets everything and so she's this and these are kind of like her handlers that are like facilitating the transaction or something mm-hmm. and you've got juro who's just loading crystals in and he's just kind of a like a dumb oaf and nifta is is kind of the the brains behind the operation and she, neither one of them like really care about this whole like oracle kingdoms thing it's like how many crystals does she really need it's like well how many gods do they worship 100 <laughs> then that's how many just put them in <laughs> uh, and then she's like and then she changed tones to like show that like she doesn't give a shit about this kid. She's just like, <clears throat> oh, Sibby, Sibby, dear, it's time. <laughs> she's kind of like thinking like, like, what the fuck is that kid? Like, get her in here, you know? Like, mm. uh, we got to get her there before this deal goes south, you know? Um, or yeah. maybe, you know, it could go there. It could go that they are, they're, she's not an oracle. And they're just selling her to a kingdom and they've got this whole thing stitched together that like, look, here's her and here's a crystal for each one of your gods that she can speak through. And they're just like doing this grand mastermind con or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And maybe yeah. they just maybe they just pick this. Maybe she maybe Sibby is actually just like a little street urchin, 
doesn't have a family orphan type yeah. thing. I I was like at one point thinking that um that Sibby could be like uh like playing them to get crystals. Oh, that <laughs> like claiming that she needs all these crystals to do some shit. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> and she's like, "Oh yeah, you got all the crystals loaded up." Like, "Yeah, we got all of them." She's like, "Okay, cool. I'll she's be like, back. I'm going to go." How many crystals do you need? How many gods do they have? Uh, uh, at least 100. Oh. Yeah, at least 100. Then I need at least 100 in there, and some may break on the way, so put a couple yeah, extra. A couple extra. And I'll go back to my lair. And I will talk to them, and I'll come back and tell you what they said. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, has a spray, Jero, spray like, paint. okay, <laughs> you say so. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, so awesome. Uh, like so many little little nuggets set up to expand on, and like the like her relationship with them being something that is still like open to interpretation, or, or their their relationship with the the yeah the whole process of her being an oracle and the bringing her to this kingdom but you really... definitely have juro and nifta on a team somehow right and, and sibi is a separate agent in this mm. you know whether they're yeah. manipulating her or she's manipulating them and then whoever's receiving her if that's a true thing you know whoever their gods how many gods do they have who is who is who is this you know like yeah. what what cultures, what's going on? Like, do I want to go serious? Do I want to go funny? Do I want to go grim, dark fantasy? You know, like, I don't Dang, know. Dude. Yeah. It is so exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's cool to like, to have seats for all these, to, to know in my head, like expectations of what we might be seeing for the next challenges. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, and talking about the next challenge, uh, yes, maybe yes. this would be a good time to go into fleshing that out a little bit. Um, yeah. Because obviously now we, a bunch of people uh, and a bunch of people who have been a part of the Right Guys curriculum um, mostly have been, uh, but others too, sent in a first story here to, to be expanded on for next week. If you did not write a story for this week, don't worry. You can still be involved in this next exercise, which is going to be taking these stories and expanding them. Because we've been speculating about all the different ways that these could go. For any one of these, there's a hundred ways that you could take it that would be really interesting and cool. If you didn't write one this week, just take one from anyone who wrote one this week. We're going to have up um, the our favorites from, um, from or not our favorites. We're going to put up all the ones that we read today. That, I mean, they're our favorites, but it's from everyone. So it's like all of them. <laughs> um, yeah. And so we're going to be putting up all of them to pretty much for you to choose from. Um, if we read your story today and you would, and you wrote two and you would rather us put up your other story, reach out to us and let us know. And we can put up the other one in the doc, but we'll just have a document with all the stories. If you didn't write one this week, but you want to get it on next week's challenge, just pick up any one of them. Yeah absolutely and expand it and that'll be so exciting to see two different takes on the way that that a story goes yeah yeah absolutely so um we're doing between four and six hundred so not mm -hmm. 300 you got to at least pass the the 400 mark and chop her off around 600 uh but yeah so this is uh this is just you know, we've talked about two different uh, ways of developing developing stories, and now it, like it's going to be cool seeing these kind of our first sequel challenge. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, and seeing seeing that develop alongside the the sort of alien, fantasy yeah, the, the seeding story, that. yeah, that that, that mm -hmm. we started here, and so also look for we'll we'll be putting uh, eventually we'll, we'll we'll be getting elements of of our our alien story that we're going to write with y'all. Um, into the discord under workshops writers workshop yeah yeah, yeah. be cool yeah. <laughs> all right that's all i got you got anything else i guess that's it yeah we'll see you guys over in the discord all right happy episode 10 you guys have a great one bye guys bye guys <laughs> <laughs>